Okay, so we're going to be talking about positions and what they look like on the court. So here I have a very simple version of it. You have a point guard, two wing players, and two post players. This is what they look like. This is what you start off as. Now, if you want to be more advanced and go more into detail, the point guard, number one, is usually the dribbler. Number two, which is the shooting guard, is the shooting specialist. Number three is a small forward who can do a little bit of both shooting, going in and out. Number four is a power forward, and they usually help out with rebounding, but they can go out. And number five is a center, which their job is to stay up here and get those rebounds. So last week, we gave an overview of the three different test passes. Today, we're going to go into further detail of the test pass and the bounce pass, and like the characteristics of both of them. Passing, in general, is the quickest and easiest way to move the, the ball around, and it's the most effective element of the sport. And passing is, is much faster than dribbling in, in terms of getting the ball from point A to point B, and it's that segues me into the next point, with that being the chest pass, being the fastest pass and how it can get the ball from point A to point B much quicker than a bounce pass or an overhead pass to go. Yes, the chest pass is the fastest way to get the ball to the team, but it's a lot easier for the opponent to intercept when it's at, when it's in the air from probably belly height and up because your hands are easier to reach like that. But when you're doing a bounce pass, you have an opponent in front of you and the hands are up. And where are the weak spots? Up there where they would be with their hands in the block. The hands are ready checked, already checked. It's between, it's between their these areas by their because it's much harder in terms of length of our arm and reach, and as far as it's not for you to be touching, especially if you need to be touching more. So that's a big reason to do the bounce pass. The negative part of the bounce pass, though, is when you use it, it's slower because of the bounce. The bounce slows down the ball. And when you throw the bounce pass, you don't judge your distance too well, and you throw it too, and you, it bounces too early in relation to the distance between you and your teammate that's receiving the ball. The ball will bounce up too high, which makes it easier to get intercepted. So we're going to demonstrate examples of how we can move the ball quickly and create a scoring opportunity through passing. Oh. All right. So now we'll be covering our shooting section of the video, and we'll be covering shooting techniques. So there's three phases of a shot. It happens really quick. Happening the preparation phase, that's the first one. The second one is the execution phase of the shot itself. And the third phase is the ball finish, after the ball has been released. So, quick things about the preparation phase. If I'm facing the hoop, I want to have my eyes on the target. My feet are in a good stance comfortable stance. Some people are shoulder width apart, some people are a little narrow. I'm probably a little more narrow than shoulder width, but whatever is comfortable for you. My hands are positioned, two hands on the ball, and my left hand, obviously I'm not holding it like this. You want your dominant hand more centered 
and your your non-dominant hand is to support, is to, is to hold it as support. And when you're shooting, you don't want to shoot with both hands. Your non-dominant hand is holding, is just assisting and holding the ball to bounce. In this hand, your dominant hand is doing the motion. Second stage is the execution stage. Then your so your elbow will be up. You'll raise the ball to the knees. Your elbow will be up, and your body will work in unison. So this just comes with practice. So you'll extend your arm, meaning straight on your arm. And you'll extend your leg. You'll do the front. In the preparation phase, your knee will be slightly bent, trying to get up. And when you're in the middle of the shot, your elbow will straighten out, and your knee will straighten out, because that generates the power of the shot. Now at the very end, you'll, you'll flip the wrist. And you'll see the rhythm of how these things go together. Don't overthink it. This is this is just visual, this is just verbal cues of what can help with your shoot, with your shot. The best the best thing to do with shooting is practice and get your reps of shooting in. So the last phase is the follow-through phase. In the follow-through phase, essentially, after the ball has left your hand, you're holding you're holding the pose of when the ball left your hand. What I like to do, what works for me, is essentially, so my, when I'm looking at the athlete, I'm aiming just above the front rim. And when I hold my ball through face, my ball through, I'm doing it as if I'm putting my hand, reaching it into the rim. Like you're putting your hand, and think of it, a cue for me, is put your hand in the cookie jar. First, I'd like to see you to start off just tracking your jump shot. And then, maybe you can record your jump shot. And maybe you can see visually what you're doing. Then watch this video, listen to what the pointers were, and see how, see if you were naturally doing those things, or if you might need to make adjustments. So, but we'll, we'll continue to practice and give points of that, that and give tips that would help you with the shooting. Talking about dribbling, so in this section, I want to say it's important to dribble with a purpose. And dribbling with a purpose means you don't dribble just to dribble. You dribble to shoot or you dribble to pass. A lot of times, when people are dribbling just to dribble, get them into trouble and it's a lot of, it's misuse. So in basketball a lot of times, many times you don't need to dribble. Like passing is the main option. But there will, the reason we do practice dribbling is because there will be times where you will need it and it will help you out of trouble. And before we get into any advanced um, dribbling drills, we want you to start practicing dribbling with your left hand, dribbling with your right hand. And you don't want to be dribbling uh, the height of the basketball is important. So if I'm dribbling like this, what I mean, it's really easy for someone to feel. You want to be, I mean, I don't want to be too like knee, knee block, back overextended, because then I'm not really in a slide position. So I want to be ready, knee slightly bent. Bent. And if you need 
first start, you'll want to watch the ball. And as you get better and progress, you look around. Maybe you can dribble while you watch TV or watch a show or watch Netflix. Or maybe you can have um, your brother or your parent hold up fingers and you have to look and see and say what number they're holding up. And this works if you to keep your eyes up. Because the best dribbler can dribble without looking at the ball. But that helps the ball stop. And then lastly, um, well, actually, what ties into that is the height of which you dribble low is part of the part of the game. So today we're talking about rebounding and why rebounding is important. It's important because you need it to win the game, so you need it both offensively and defensively. Now, three things that make you a good rebounder. It all comes down to your physical, mental, and emotional skill. Today we're going to be talking about your emotional skill. So. How bad do you want the rebound? So do you desire? And what are you willing to do to get that rebound, which is your courage? So those are the two things. All right, the next section will be on offense. And we'll be covering the straight line drive and the drive jump shot. And the two are going to go hand in hand. because they're going to, If you can do one, it's going to set you up for the other in terms of how it will affect you. So, here's an example of a straight line drive. So with that one, that is essentially is you're beating the defender off of the dribble with quickness, and you're going in for a layup. And this is the most direct um, offensive attack, straight line drive. Be a defender off the dribble, go straight to the basket with the lift. Typically, we're going to do this, we'll, we'll start off practicing going toward our dominant side. So right-handers, they're going to find it easier to go right. Left, lefties are going to find it easier to go left. This is how it is. And so, say I uh, beat my defender multiple times off that move. They're going to start, they're going to know, like, okay, been beating me off that same move, I'm going to go and commit to stopping the layup. And he's going to start expecting it. And this is when, like all sports, is when you implement deception. So you start setting things up. So you have option one, so you, can, you have a counter effect if you go back to option, option A and option B. In this case, option A would be the straight line drive. And if Try to take away my straight line drive, commit heavily to it, then I'll use my straight option B, which is the drive jump shot. Here's an example. They're committed to stopping the drive, and they're thinking that I'm going to drive to lay the ball up. But you stop suddenly and raise up to shoot. And this is effective. And it's only two moves. But those two options keep the defender on his toes and keep him down. Which will make you a better score. So now we'll be introducing the give and go. Which we touched. So it'll implement some stuff that we've t talked about in the previous videos. So give and go utilizing the backdoor cut and the front cut. And so we'll give some examples. This is the first example will be give and go using a front cut. Okay, so now let's talk about defense and discipline when defending. Now there might be times where your body is tired and you need to push yourself. That's where discipline comes in. But we also need to have discipline when 
following the coach's game plan. For example, if we are playing defense and we're, the coach's plan is to stick player to player, then we stick player to player and we won't be playing a zone. But if the coach wants us to play a zone, then we stick in the zone instead of marking our player. And introducing forward. So there's five that we're going to be talking about. The first one is the cross. The second one is sprint. The third one is change of pace, change of or change of speed. The second one is change of direction. And the fifth one is the one two stop. So with the trot, that's the most most control. It's like a nineteen inch jog. You're under control, you're relaxed as you're dribbling the ball. The second one is you're moving fast, you're going as fast as you can while being able to dribble the ball. Third is change of pace. And this is a very, very important because in basketball speed helps a lot, but those that can change their pace can can be able to go from slow to fast at any moment, or fast to slow, which is called decelerating. Accelerating and decelerating. And those are very important. And then um, change of direction, which means you can you you don't you're not moving in linear lines. You can you can face one way and get to another way. This opens up angles of where you can attack from. And this is the one two stop. This is like footwork. That's very important when you you're picking up your dribble to shoot. So I'll show you ways of how this looks. So first one we've got we've got. There is the five footworks for this video. We'll cover more and build on to it in the next one. There are five ways to apply it and practice it without the ball. The trot, just practice a nice deep shot. For the one two stop, I recommend going in zigzag. And when you go to the right, your first step will be on the opposite foot. So if I'm going to the right, left foot, right foot. I go to the left. Five of those practice. So for this week, we're going to be talking about perseverance. Now, there will be days where you don't feel like going outside and shooting or you don't feel like joining that Zoom call, but don't worry. Like, keep pushing because you can only get better. So 